Please join me in the responsive call to worship. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. I invite you to join in singing hymn number 459, Lord, you give the great commission, one of my favorites. And I invite you to rise in body or spirit as you sing.
may be seated. O oh God, you are beyond words and description. Your love is beyond knowledge and explanation. Make our hearts ready to receive you. Change us, we pray, that our lives may reflect the glory of your transfiguration as we rejoice in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. Holy One, surprise us today with your glory. Let the veil fall from the one we have become too familiar with, that we might see beyond flesh and blood the one who called himself the Son of Man. Let the manifestation of him shine on us all with so brilliant a glory of so glo with a glory so brilliant that it knocks us off our feet blind as it knocked off, as it knocked as it did Paul it blinds us with humility and leaves us speechless and like Job the only thing we can respond with is I have uttered what I did not know. Things too wonderful to me, which I did not understand. Let your glory be manifest so that the only response for us is to fall on our faces and cry, holy, holy, holy. Let your glory shine so that we want nothing more than to spend the rest of our lives praising you, serving you, loving you with the mighty love with which you have loved us. And help us then to see that glory in each other. The same presence that we see in him that we might love one another as you have loved us. Holy One, we continue to pray for those in our congregation who are sick, who are recovering from surgery, who are recovering from wounds far deeper, from loss, from disappointment, from heartache. We pray for restoration for all. We also pray for the people of Ukraine, for the children caught in war, for the refugees who have left everything behind, and for the brave men and women who are staying and are willing to lose their lives for freedom. We pray all of this in the name of the one who, when revealed, we saw the glory of God, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, who we are shows God's presence in the world. The divine power is reflected even more fully and powerfully. When we live in God's love as God's beloved community, the world takes notice. So let us bring ourselves, our spiritual gifts, and our resources that God may be glorified. And once again, I want to say thank you. Thank you for the sacrifices that you have made during the last couple of years that have allowed this church to continue through some very difficult times. Uh, you can give today by, um, there are offering plates here at the front. We're not yet passing the offering plate or in the back as you leave. And um, you can also give online uh, to, if you go to our website, which I'm sure those online are seeing right now, um, firstchurchstratford.org, 
And in the blue area at the bottom, there is a link that says information about donations and pledges. Let us pray. Oh God, we commit to you today the use of all our gifts, wisdom, knowledge, healing, administration, hospitality, and our finances as well as an act of worship. Amen.
may be seated. Seven years, but I knew May 
some time uh, playing over at the Methodist Church. She was, as I recall, 13 years music director over there, and then at the Lordship Church before that. I also want to say a little bit of all send to Joy Bach and to all my friends there at First Church. For those of you who don't know me, I'm John Collins. I'm an old friend and colleague of Meg's. Our friendship goes back to the 1990s when I was pastor of Orchard Community Church and Meg was music director there. Meg and I had a great time working together and she was always so supportive of my ministry. So it's an honor to be able to celebrate her ministry at First Church today, to tell you that from the very beginning I recognized her outstanding gifts for ministry. And it's been wonderful to watch her use those gifts in a variety of settings in the Stratford community and also Birchport Hospital. I was thrilled when she took this position at First Church. I knew that she would bring that same compassion to this congregation. And so it's an honor today to celebrate her gifts and her ministry, to say thank you to her for everything that she's done for First Church and for this community. So Meg, I thank you for your friendship, I thank you for your support, I thank you for your example over the years, and you know that I wish you and John all of God's blessings as you begin this new chapter in your lives. Thank you. Hello from Florida to all our northern church family and friends. We miss you all terribly. Meg, we just wanted to congratulate you on your retirement. We wish you and John many happy years in beautiful Maine. We want to thank you for being such a wonderful pastor all these years and a great friend to us. P.S. This only took five takes. <laughs> <laughs> Meg, it was great working with her on staff this year. I wish you had been longer, uh, enjoying your retirement, and we'll miss you. Many thanks for the introduction. Wake up when with me, substituted for bell ring, and then you came to our church. You've been there for all of our milestones. Um, thank you for being with the girls tonight for that first. 
Great fun here. While at First Church Stratford, Meg organized trips to France in 2017 and Italy in 2019. Those of us who did not travel were still able to enjoy these journeys through Meg's beautiful photos. Thank you for all your time. 
message uh, to me and so many people. We've loved having you here, and I wish you a happy retirement and a new adventure. Take care. My dear Matt, to pay appropriate tribute to you in less than a minute seems impossible, but we'll try. First, there's the colleague of fame. From playing settings of George Herbert poems for your degree project when we were very, very young graduate students, to being blessed to follow you onto the Oregon bench at SUMC, to being a fellow mental health chaplain, to swapping sermon ideas, your insight and vision for a deeper and richer spiritual experience for those in your care has always been an inspiration to me. Underlying the colleague thing, though, is the friendship thing. From those early days at Yale to today, with me and Muncie, and you going to that other M place, and everything in between, from living on opposite coasts to living next door to each other, and let's not forget Farm Fridays. Friendship has been your greatest gift to me, and to so many of us. So I'm hoping, backwards, the wooden flute that you gave to members of the choir at your wedding to John all those years ago in West Haven. Every day when I see it, I am reminded of what a steadfast, faithful friend can be, because that is what you have been and remain to me. So, Meg, dear friend, every best blessing to you in your next chapter. Hey, Meg. On behalf of Vinny and myself, we want to wish you the very best of everything that life and retirement has to offer. We certainly enjoy your being here for the past seven years, and you will surely be missed. Good luck. Much love. This is Dana Putra coming to you from First Church of Old Greenwich. Uh, I just wanted to congratulate you and wish you all the best in the future. And as well, Tom Woodman um, wanted to record something and send it to you as a part of the celebration of your great career. Um, before he sang, he gave some opening remarks reflecting on memories and stuff like that. Unfortunately, though, I forgot to turn on the microphone. Um, so you'll hear him sing beautifully in about a minute or so, but I didn't want to let Tom's remarks go unheard. Um, he wishes you the best. Again, I wish you the best. I'm sure lots of past and present First Church members wish you the best. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you as you go on in life. So here is Tom Woodman singing The Call.
Today's reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 20, verses 25 through 36. And now that I know none of you among who I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will ever see my face again, therefore I declare you to this day that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you, for I did not shrink declaring to you the whole purpose of God. Keep watch over yourselves and over all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to the shepherd, to the shepherd, the church of God that he obtained with the blood of his own son. I know that after I have gone, savage rules will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Some, of, some even from your own group will come distorting the truth in order to entice the disciples to follow them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to warn everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God into, I commend you to God into the message of his grace, a message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or clothing. You know for yourself that I worked with my own hands to support myself and my companions. In all of this, I have given you an example that by such work we must support the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus, for he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down with them, he knelt down with them all and prayed. There was much weeping among them all. They embraced Paul and kissed him, grieving especially because of what he had said that they would not see him again. Then they brought him to the ship. The one, the one thing I didn't ask is, uh, in planning this today, was how long the video would be. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I do have something I, I believe that I, uh, it's important to share. You see, when reflecting on what to share today, I had a lot of time, and what came to mind was this story from Acts. Uh, Paul is leaving his beloved churches in Asia Minor and heading back to Jerusalem, where uh, he knows that he will never see those people again. Now, it's a far more dramatic story than we are experiencing today, but there are a lot of similarities. Like the story we have all gathered to say goodbye to someone who has been a faithful servant of Jesus Christ and to this church for the past seven years. And goodbyes are never easy. And I think Meg's sermon last week was similar to what Paul was trying to do, and that is to tell us what's really important and what we should keep in mind after she's gone. She wanted to emphasize the things that are important, just as Paul did. And I'm sure it's difficult to just let go. I'm sure it's difficult for her to let go as it was for Paul. But I wanted to confront a reality that we sometimes skip over and we really, there is a sense of denial. You see, today is goodbye and no one knows that more than Meg. It brought to mind what I have experienced often in weddings and in funerals. And what I mean by that is at a wedding sometimes someone will say to me, oh, I'm not losing a son, I'm gaining a daughter. And I just want to say to them, no, you're not. You're losing a son. And I want to say to the other parents, you're losing a daughter. Uh, also, I think sometimes at funerals, I have people come to me and they say, well, I want us to celebrate the life. I don't, I don't want it to be a... Uh, you know, a, a rather dismal experience. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. We do want to celebrate when someone has passed away, but it really can't be a celebration unless we also acknowledge the loss. Now, this is not a funeral. Although it may feel a little like that to me, we're losing someone who meant so much to us. And Meg is losing a group of people that she has loved deeply for the last seven years. And I'm not trying to be a downer Dan here or 
But I want you to understand the gravity of today. And I have come to believe that some of the most powerful experiences in my life have been ones of great joy, but also pain. And although there is a sadness, there is a, also joy. Joy and gratitude for having known Meg. Gratitude for how she has touched all of our lives. Joy and hope that this is not the end. But as our final liturgy will say today, when we will once again be one in Jesus Christ. For Christians, goodbyes are never forever, but they are goodbye for now. As, it, as I have often said, Meg coming here was truly a God thing. It really was a miracle how it all came together. Not through the normal channels that something like this would normally happen. And her service has been a God thing as well. A gift to us all. I feel like today I'm losing my closest friend in the church. Uh, we have shared so much every week. Sharing all about the church, but also all the things that we've gone through in the last four years. But I'm sure I feel like most of you feel out there that you're one of her closest friends. Because she made us feel that way. In those moments when we were with her, she made each of us feel special. Made us feel like we must be one of her closest friends. So in closing, let me just say, Goodbye, dear friend. We love you. Well done, good and faithful servant. And as the Jewish blessing says, may the Lord watch between you and me when we are absent from one another. And I would add, until God sees fit to bring us back together again. Amen. Good morning, uh, my name is Walter Dunbar. I'm the Vice uh, Chairman of the Board of Trustees. Uh, the Board of Trustees at a recent uh, meeting voted unanimously to change the title for Reverend Meg Williams from Associate Pastor to Co-Pastor. Uh, with that recognition and with her outstanding leadership and contribution to this beautiful church. The Board of Trustees commissioned that a photo be made uh, that would be hung in our gallery of ministers, all 28, reaching back to Adam Blakeman in 1639. I want to thank uh, Ben Brannon for doing all the legwork to see that we had a photographer and that we had this picture framed and ready for this morning. So, Meg will be the first woman in our minister's gallery. <laughs> Meg, it is a delight and a privilege for me to present this to you on behalf of the entire church family. We are anxious to see it hanging in our gallery.
And now Eric Nyquist has a presentation. Eric is our senior deacon. Reverend Williams, you were hired seven years ago to fill the position of part-time associate minister at First Congregational Church of Stratford. You have fulfilled your obligation. You did your job, and as far as I can tell, you had no disciplinary issues during your seven years. <laughs> you were totally adequate. I don't really know why we're having a big celebration today. Okay. Meg, I wish it was that, because then this would not be as hard as it is for all of us to say goodbye. You are an amazing, wonderful, integral part of our church. Today we celebrate you as not just a minister, but as a person and a friend. We celebrate not just your time here, but a wonderful career in both ministry and music and the profound impact you've had not only on First Congregational Church, but also other churches in Stratford and the entire Stratford community. You have given of yourself time and time again, establishing personal relationships, leading trips to foreign countries, introducing us to paper flat Jesus, caring for those in grief, and celebrating blessed moments in our lives. You have provided steady leadership through your personal health challenges and also through a worldwide pandemic. You also worked so well with Reverend Ed Rawls. You never, never seemed to mind that Ed had to mentor you in how to be organized, how to not overlook the details, how to look ahead and not miss things on the calendar. And, and really, you never got upset when he held your hand and guided you to learn about Zoom and other technologies through the pandemic. <laughs> With all seriousness, it takes special people to be able to work as a team the way Ed and Meg did. Um, all too often, it, it results in, in more of a mess than it's worth, and that was anything but the case here. You always displayed teamwork together. You had a love of our church and the people in it, and you kept your focus on that at all times. You had the ability to play off of each other's strengths and cover for each other's weaknesses. You put aside your egos and any hint of one-upsmanship, and together you were a tremendous team that worked always for the benefit of God and for the people of this church and this community. Meg, we thank you for your thoughtful sermons, your genuine and honest relationship with our parishioners, the calm reason you brought to challenging topics, the hundreds and hundreds of hours over your contract that you worked. Yes, John, we knew it. And the care and compassion and love that you shared with us here every day as part of your ministry. Even though you will be gone from our sanctuary and our email lists and our Facebook pages, yes, we know that's the rule, you will never be gone from our hearts. Nobody can tell us that you, we have to erase you from that. So we love you, we will miss you, and on behalf of a very grateful congregation, we hope you will accept this purse that we have collected. There is more to come because even after the check was cut, more donations came in to show you how much we love you and we wish you well in Maine. Good luck to you and John and happy retirement. I had not planned to say anything at this point, except that uh, I think we should sing the first and last verses only of the hymn. <laughs> but I will say, thank you all. I am so overwhelmed with everything. Um, I do notice in this very ecumenical gathering today um, that the Congregationalists are present, a few more than the Methodists, but not many. They're, thank you for all being here. Um, after the service, I will be going up that way, so please come up that way to, to speak, if you will. 
And uh, although there is a celebration for me, there is also a cake for my birthday friend, Carol. Thank you for being here, Carol. And I want you to know, as far as partnership goes, in at least one household, we are referred to as med and egg. <laughs> we are such a team. So, and now let us sing hymn number 609, Take My Life and Let It Be Consecrated. Let's sing the first and the last stanzas. Please rise in body or spirit. Commission. Let us go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no one evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all people, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. I'm Michael Seba, Area Conference Minister for the Southern New England Conference of the United Church of Christ. And uh, I just want to note, Meg, that while I did uh, neglect to bring, to bring George Herbert to the uh, celebration, our friends from Greenwich uh, amply supplied that, so I'm happy about that. There's a insert in your bulletin that is a litany of farewell. Uh, please uh, join me in this, in this reading. On February 23rd, 2015, this local church called the Reverend Meg Williams to serve as associate minister. I thank First Congregational Church, its members and friends for the love, kindness, and support shown to me these past seven years. I ask forgiveness for the mistakes I have made. I am grateful for the ways my leadership has been accepted. As I leave, I carry with me all that I have learned here. I forgive and accept your gratitude, trusting that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God. On behalf of the Fairfield East Association and the United Church of Christ, I witness to the words spoken, words of thankfulness, forgiveness, and release. The members of our association hold each of you and all of you in prayer. We pledge our support in this transition signified in this service. Let us pray. God, whose everlasting love for all is trustworthy, help each of us to trust the future which rests in your care. The time we were together in your name saw our laughter and tears, our hopes and disappointments. Guide us as we hold these cherished memories, but move in new directions until that time to come when we are completely one with you and with each other 
In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And in the words of John Wesley, do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, for as long as you ever can. And may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>